My name is Catherine Anite, the Global Programs Director at Small Media Foundation. It's a London-based organization that supports about 33 countries across Africa, the MENA region, and Central Asia um, to champion digital rights online uh, and, and online uh, freedom of expression issues at the Universal Periodic Review. Um, I also work with the Freedom of Expression Hub as um, a founding director and I sit on the high-level panel of legal experts on media freedom. First of all, judges play a very crucial role in advancing the rule of law, and that includes uh, human rights and freedom of expression is part of that. So this, this training is building capacity of uh, judicial officers in um, 15 African countries um, across East Africa, West Africa, Southern Africa, and parts of the MENA region, uh, including Sudan, um, to have a broader understanding on the international uh, normative standards on freedom of expression, access to information, uh, media rights, and, and the safety of journalists. So we hope that um, through this training, which is a training of trainers, uh, we will trickle down information and knowledge on international standards um, at the national level. So we hope that these judges will go back to their national uh, jurisdictions uh, and um, share this knowledge, develop uh, training manuals that fit within their national context by referring to international standards on, on freedom of expression and safety of journalists so they can empower other judicial office officers across uh, the different countries they come from. I think, um, let's start with when the Winhop Declaration you know, came into existence. That was in the early 90s, 1991, to be, uh, to be specific. At that time, there, there was a restrictive environment for, uh, for the media, especially journalists, across uh, Africa. And when uh, journalists came together you know, um, to deliberate on their issues, there was a consensus for independent press, there was a consensus for pluralism of the media and independence of the media. So um, 30 years down the road, the issues are still valid only that now we're looking at pluralism on the digital arena. So we need to see uh, state support the media um, on different fronts, the legacy media and the new media. Uh, we need to see more progressive legislation that um, defends freedom of expression and media freedom. We need to see more funding from donors, you know, that expands uh, journalistic work. And we need to see people appreciate the role of the media. So the Winhop uh, Declaration is very important in that it's still uh, relevant in um, en enunciating the role of the media, um, also pointing out the independence of the media. And, and we hope that states you know, let journalists work independently uh, without meddling uh, into other political issues. Um, uh, we're seeing more arrests of journalists now and this was also happening then in 1990s. Um, so the situation has not changed much, but we hope that uh, with progressive um, legislation, we can change uh, for the better operation environment for journalists. So freedom of expression is not a preserve of the media or of journalists. It's a right that accrues to all individuals and human beings. So if the citizen understands the importance of uh, freedom of expression, then they will understand the role of the media in promoting um, access to information and freedom of expression. So we want to see cit citizenry, uh, we want to see state, states uh, different arms of states, including um, the judiciary and the executive, support freedom of expression uh, through coming up with um, an, a conducive environment for the enjoyment of this right.